The 15th of September, 1935, Nuremberg, Germany. The Nazi regime announces the so-called Nuremberg Laws, which among other things ban future intermarriages and sexual relations between Jews and people of German or related blood, as the Nazis believe that such relationships are dangerous because they lead to mixed-race children. According to the Nazi regime, these children and their descendants undermine the purity of the German race, and individuals caught breaching these laws are to be arrested and sent to concentration camps. In November 1935, the Nuremberg Laws are expanded to include the Romani population, drawing support from many non-Nazi Germans who harbor social prejudice towards the Roma. The Nazis judge the Roma to be racially inferior, and their fate in Europe will parallel that of the Jews in the Holocaust. Among the persecuted Roma and Sinti people in the Third Reich is the 1933 boxing champion in the middleweight category. His name is Johann Trollmann. Johann Wilhelm Trollmann, one of nine children of Sinti parents, was born on the 27th of December 1907 in the village of Wilshire, then part of the German Empire. Because his hair, as well as his athletic and aesthetic body, reminded Johann's family of a beautiful, well-grown tree, everybody called him Rukeli, a term which comes from the Romani language meaning tree. His talent in boxing was discovered early, and when Johann was only eight years old, he had his first fight in the boxing ring. He then became a member of a boxing club in Hanover and went on to win four regional championships and a North German championship as an amateur boxer before he was 20. In the period of the Weimar Republic, which was the name given to the German government from 1918 to 1933, boxing was a hugely popular sport. Trollmann became popular not only for his good looks, but also for his speed, agility and technical proficiency. His characteristic dancing style in the ring is today often regarded as the beginning of modern boxing and compared to Muhammad Ali's. However, it was allegedly because of his non-German boxing style why in 1928 he was denied a place in the German team for the Amsterdam Summer Olympics. Instead, the German center boxer, who had lost a couple of times against Rukeli. Trollmann then moved to Berlin and turned professional, winning 29 of his 52 fights between October 1929 and May 1933. When Adolf Hitler and his Nazi party came into power in Germany in January 1933, they quickly turned the nation's fragile democracy into a one-party dictatorship that persecuted Jews, Roma, or political opponents and others. The Nazi claim to control all aspects of German life also extended to sports. German sports imagery of the 1930s served to promote the myth of Aryan racial superiority and physical prowess. In sculpture and in other forms, German artists idealized athletes' well-developed muscle tone and heroic strength and accentuated ostensibly Aryan facial features. Such imagery also reflected the importance the Nazi regime placed on physical fitness, a prerequisite for military service. In April 1933, an Aryans-only policy was instituted in all German athletic organizations. Non-Aryans, Jews or individuals with Jewish parents, and the Roma were systematically excluded from German sports facilities and associations. The German Boxing Association expelled professional light heavyweight champion Erich Zellig in April 1933 because he was Jewish. Johann Trollmann was not spared this persecution, and with the rise of the Nazis, the right-wing media increasingly abused Rukeli and described him as the gypsy in the ring. On the 9th of June 1933, Rukeli boxed against Adolf Witt for the German light heavyweight title, which had been vacated by the previously mentioned Jewish holder, Erich Zellig, who had fled Germany in fear of his life. Rukeli was on course to win when the Nazi chairman of the boxing authority intervened, ordering the judges to call a no decision and not to award the title. The decision caused such an uproar among the audience that Rukeli had to be hastily crowned champion after all. However, only a few days later, he was stripped of the title again by the German boxing authorities because of bad boxing. A new fight was scheduled for the 21st of July, and Rukeli was ordered to fight in the German style and not to dance like a gypsy, as the Nazis claimed, otherwise he would lose his license. During the fight, he should stand foot to foot with his opponent in the middle of the ring, and thus abandon his dynamic fighting style. Trollmann felt compelled to meet these demands. 
On the 21st of July, he entered the ring with his face and body powdered white with flour, and his hair dyed blonde, a caricature of an Aryan and a courageous act of protest against his discrimination. He just stood still and took the blows of his opponent, Gustav Eder, until he was knocked out in the fifth round. Over the years, from 1933 to 1935, he fought in several other matches but lost them all, or rather he had to lose them, because it was demanded of him by Nazi sports officials. In 1935, he was expelled from the German Pugilism Association, which meant he was barred from practicing his profession. After that, he ended up fighting at fairs. Drawing support from many non-Nazi Germans who harbored social prejudice towards the Roma, the Nazis judged the Roma to be racially inferior. The Nazis identified the Roma as having alien blood and therefore as being racially undesirable. According to the Nazis, they were not as bad as Jews, but they were not of pure Aryan blood. They did not live a settled way of life, and they did not fit into the kind of society that the Nazis aspire to. The law for the protection of German blood and German honor, one of two Nuremberg race laws adopted by the Nazis in September 1935, was expanded in November of the same year to include the Romani population. This law made it illegal for the Roma and Sinti to marry Aryans. The Sinti are a subgroup of Romani people mostly found in Germany. In June 1935, just three months before the Nazis adopted the Nuremberg laws, Johann Trollmann married Olga Frieda Bilder and together they had one daughter, Rita. However, he struggled to fend for himself, was sent twice to Hanover Island labor camp, and went into hiding for a time to avoid further persecution. In 1938, in order to avoid deportation to a concentration camp, he agreed to be sterilized under the diagnosis of congenital feeble-mindedness. He divorced his non sinti wife in order to protect her and his little daughter, Rita. The Second World War started on the 1st of September 1939 when Nazi Germany invaded Poland. Trollmann was drafted into the German army and fought in Poland, Belgium and France. Operation Barbarossa, which was the code name for the German invasion of the Soviet Union, began on Sunday the 22nd of June 1941. The same year, Trollmann was sent to the Eastern Front where he was wounded. In 1942, he was dishonorably discharged from the Wehrmacht, the German armed forces, for racial reasons, along with all the other Sinti and Roma soldiers. On his return to Hanover, Johann Trollmann was arrested in July 1942, taken to the Central Office for Gypsy Affairs at the police headquarters, and severely mistreated. He was then transported to the Neuengamme concentration camp near Hamburg and became prisoner number 9841. In the concentration camps, the Sinti were forced to wear either a black triangle, indicating their classification as asocial, or a brown triangle, specifically reserved for the Roman Sinti peoples. As in other concentration camps, the Neuengamme prisoners were given inadequate food, shelter, or medicine to maintain their health. The camp authorities deployed them in forced labor, in camp construction, in the brickworks factory, in river regulation projects on the Elbe, and on construction of the Dove Alba Canal. The conditions under which the camp authorities forced the prisoners to work, and the absence of even rudimentary medical care, facilitated the spread of disease, including pneumonia, tuberculosis, and typhus. In addition to the dreadful living conditions, the prisoners suffered beatings and arbitrary punishments. SS overseers and prisoner functionaries, such as the camp and block elders, and the capos, abused and killed prisoners according to whim, in addition to the typical official punishments of prisoners, such as solitary confinement, standing at attention for hours, whipping, hanging from posts, and transfer to penal labor details. In all, more than 50,000 prisoners, almost half of those imprisoned in the camp during its existence, died in the Neuengamme concentration camp. When the camp commandant recognized Trollmann as the former boxing star, he ordered him to train the camp's SS men at night, following his punishing 12-hour work shifts. In three months, Rukhili lost 30 kilos, and because of his deteriorating health, the underground prisoners' committee faked his death, provided him with a false identity, and managed to get him transferred to Wittenberger, one of Neuengamme's satellite camps. But there too, he was recognized as the former champion boxer and was made to fight Emil Cornelius, a former criminal and hated capo. 
Capos were concentration camp prisoners selected to oversee other prisoners on labor details, and were responsible for maintaining discipline and the work rate of the prisoners in their charge. The Capos had almost unlimited power and could punish, whip, and even kill prisoners as they saw fit. Johann Trollmann beat Emil Cornelius, but for his victory, he would pay with his life. There are two accounts of the circumstances of Rukeli's death. One version says that Cornelius, seeking revenge for his humiliation, forced Trollmann to work all day until he was exhausted, before attacking and killing him with a shovel. A different account says that Cornelius murdered Trollmann right after the fight with an iron club or a truncheon. When Johann Trollmann died in 1944, he was 36 years old. His death was reported to be an accident, and his corpse was buried together with many other dead bodies of the camp on the cemetery of Wittenberger. Rückeli's brother Heinrich perished in Auschwitz, but the rest of his immediate family survived. After the war, Rückeli's fate was not talked about, not even within his own family. However, in 1997, a book about his life was written, and in November 2003, after massive public pressure, the German Boxing Association finally recognized Trollmann as the winner of the 1933 championship fight and included him in their list of German boxing champions. For his daughter Rita, life was not easy either. Rita's mother never wanted to tell her anything about her father, and once when she was drunk, she even derogatorily referred to her daughter's Sinti origin. Rita only heard the truth from her aunt at the age of 15 or 16. When she wanted to become a nurse, she was not hired because the hospital did not want Sinti, as a member of staff later told her. Rukeli's revenge is not only that his legacy goes on through his daughter Rita and her family, but his bravery is remembered until today, thanks to memorials, books, and documentaries produced about his life. In addition, Johann Trollmann has become a symbol of persecution of the Romani and Sinti people by the Nazis. It is estimated that at least 250,000 European Roman Sinti people were killed during World War II, but the number may be as high as 500,000. Today, almost 80 years after the Romani genocide during World War II, sometimes known as the Poraimos, meaning devouring in the Roma language, minorities, particularly the Roma in Europe and other parts of the world, are increasingly experiencing hate speech and are being targeted by politicians and others. Because we have already seen what happened when members of the Jewish, as well as the Roma, and other minorities in Nazi Germany were portrayed as alien and antagonistic to the nation and German values and culture, we must do all in our power to combat hate speech, which incites intolerance and violence. There were many tears shed for Johann Röckli Trollmann. Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Be sure to like and subscribe, and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss our next episodes. We thank you, and we'll see you next time on the channel.